Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a bizarre new discovery involving unusual radio signals, but this time with a potential explanation based on the observations using optical telescopes. Or just to rephrase this, somewhere out there in our galaxy, there's a bunch of very bizarre radio signals, most of which were discovered in just the last few years. And up until this recent study, it was extremely difficult to explain what causes them. But the study released just a few days ago was able to pinpoint exactly what's causing these signals, which might lead to some solutions. And so let's talk about these signals, the discovery and the explanation in more detail, but I guess first, just a few basics. So here we're talking about what's known as a radio transient. Basically, a radio signal that happens once in a while and sometimes repeats, sometimes doesn't. And since early 2000s, a lot of these signals have been discovered all over the place, with the most famous mystery being fast radio bursts. These super fast radio signals coming from all over the place that scientists have been detecting for several decades. Now you can learn more about this phenomenon in some of the previous videos in the description, but in this case what makes these signals different is that they're actually really fast. They only last for microseconds, disappearing into nothingness afterwards. Naturally, fast signals are not the only signals that exist out there. And in recent years, scientists discovered several of these unusual long-period radio signals that make even less sense. But one of the reasons we're only making these discoveries now and why these signals were previously unknown to us is really because of advances in radio telescopes. For example, the ICRAR, International Center for Radio Astronomy Research, and specifically the Murchison Whitefield Array that you see right here, only started operating a few years back and is actually responsible for most of these radio discoveries. This is basically one of the most advanced radio telescopes and it's currently operating from Western Australia. And though at first it was mostly focusing on trying to map the entire night skies in radio light, which it actually did accomplish a few years back, and we've talked about this in one of the previous videos right there. As a side note, this map is actually in full 3D and you can basically play around with it in one of the links in the description, discovering a bunch of objects that might be familiar to you and some objects that you might have never heard of before. And so in addition to all of these previous discoveries, in the last few years, researchers also started to take a look at something that didn't make as much sense, much longer signals that seem to last for maybe a few seconds or maybe even a few minutes, disappearing for hours or even days. And so the discovery of these long period radio transients was actually kind of unexpected and much more mysterious. And one of the reasons they were not seen previously is because obviously nobody was looking for them and nobody thought they were even possible. And in the last 10 years, quite a few different signals have been discovered as well, but not too many. Mostly because this is still a kind of a emerging class of transients and because we basically know absolutely nothing about them. For example, the first such signal was the one you see right here. It was an extremely polarized pulse of light that seemed to appear every 18 minutes for at least 3 months. This was back in 2018. But it then kind of disappeared to never appear again. Then there is another signal known as ASCAP J1935-2148 that I believe we discussed in one of the previous videos that should be somewhere in the description that seemed to appear every 54 minutes but also produced a bunch of different types of light that were once again polarized as well. Intriguingly this was actually located extremely close to the famous magnetar so it wasn't actually clear if it's caused by the magnetar or something else. Then there was ASCAP J1755-25 which seemed to be a pulse lasting 2 minutes but has never been repeated again and only happened once. Chime J0630-25 seemed to happen every 421 seconds with each pulse lasting for a few seconds but this one was actually really interesting because it seemed to be the closest discovered to date. It was only about 600 light years away from planet Earth. Then GPM J1839-10 which repeated every 22 minutes was really surprising because it was discovered to be active for at least 30 years, possibly even longer. And so basically there's this one signal that seems to appear every 22 minutes and has been doing so for a very long time. Nobody knows what it is. And a signal ILT J1101-5521 with a period of 2 hours was potentially explained as maybe binary white dwarf system with a red dwarf star and a white dwarf orbiting every two hours and possibly interacting producing these radio waves. And so in general it's actually been kind of difficult to explain what causes these very bizarre and very long signals, but we're pretty certain it's not aliens. 
None of these signals appear to be artificial, and they all seem to possess natural frequencies and are overall just a little bit too hectic to be of any use to anyone when it comes to communication. But they're all highly polarized, suggesting powerful magnetic fields, and seem to be at least a few seconds long and sometimes even lasting for minutes or even hours. And because of these bizarre observations, to date, only two potential objects have been used to explain their origins. These are either magnetic white dwarfs or maybe magnetic neutron stars, also known as magnetars, and possibly in some kind of a binary system, which is the only way to explain these repeated observations. But there's never really been a direct evidence and no actual consensus on what exactly could cause this. And that's actually because the observations to date mostly focused on faster signals, and so these longer signals have only been discovered recently, and really only by accident. But we know that a lot of objects can actually cause these long radio signals, including planets like Jupiter. As a matter of fact, we've discussed some of the previous detections from brown dwarfs in another video and in the description. Which means that the real mystery here is what object can possibly create these, because we know that many objects can technically produce them. So for all we know, these actually could be planets, they could be brown dwarfs, but due to the polarization of light and due to powerful magnetic fields, researchers believe that these are probably star-like objects. But up until recently, there was a major problem. The problem was that we only had radio observations, but no emissions in other light. No optical light, obviously no infrared, and obviously no x-rays and so on. And so in order to discover what's happening here and what exactly is causing this, we needed to have optical associations. But that turned out to be really difficult, and for one simple reason. So far, most of these emissions have actually been discovered in extremely crowded regions. Basically, like you see right here, there are just way too many potential targets here, and technically any of these stars or tiny objects could produce these emissions. Luckily, that was not the case for the recently detected signal. Here we had a signal known as Gleam X G0704-37 that was actually discovered on the outskirts of the Milky Way, 5000 light years away from us, in the constellation Pupis a region that doesn't actually have that many stars, which allows us to triangulate the location where the signal potentially came from. And that's exactly what was achieved now. Because the signal was not hiding behind any stars, and there was a clear view toward it, Hurley Walker and her team was able to pinpoint the exact location and, more importantly, what most likely produced the signal. And so in this case, the radio waves seem to have come from the location with an M-type star or a red dwarf that very likely created the signal. And if correct, there is obviously a new mystery. We know that by itself, a red dwarf should not be producing these bizarre signals. Specifically, it seemed to produce a very steady pulse pretty much every 2.9 hours that seems to last for approximately one minute. And it's been doing this for basically 10 years. Or at least 10 years based on the data we have. It's actually much more likely that it's been doing this longer, and we've just never seen this until recently. And surprisingly, this is actually one of the longest period radio transients ever detected. We've never really seen a signal that lasted this long and was so periodic. But we know that a single star should not be able to do this, especially based on the amount of energy that seems to be released. A typical M-type star or a red dwarf is much, much smaller than the Sun in both mass and luminosity and doesn't actually possess any mechanisms that would allow it to emit so many radio waves so frequently for such a long time. And so that means that there has to be a partner that potentially interacts with the star producing these emissions. And so if this is a binary, there are obviously two possible candidates once again, a neutron star or a white dwarf. And it might resemble something like this. So there's probably some kind of a magnetic white dwarf here, with the radio emissions generated when the stellar wind from the red dwarf pushes against the magnetosphere from the white dwarf, with all of this wind accelerated, which then produces these powerful radio emissions. And because these objects orbit around one another, we're seeing these as repeating long radio signals. And so 2.9 hours is most likely the spin and the orbit of this unusual polar system. But naturally other explanations are possible too. And these types of systems are usually referred to as polars, with the most famous member being AM Hercules. Here we always have some kind of a white dwarf and some kind of a donor star, usually a red dwarf, with the only difference being that these systems will always contain very powerful magnetic fields. Here's a simple image made by NASA, basically explaining how this works. And so right now this is the best explanation we have. But obviously it doesn't explain why other polars don't produce similar emissions and why this is the only such emission we've discovered so far with such bizarre properties. And so basically the only way to confirm this is to find more of these systems somewhere out there. 
But I guess for now this is still going to remain a bit of a mystery, mostly because despite discovering something like 10 of these objects, they still seem to be super rare and represent some of the strangest and most mysterious radio signals we've ever seen. And it will definitely take a while to confirm exactly what this is. But until we do, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below, including the videos about fast radio bursts. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.